So today we're going to talk about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures and how to do some calculations involving those things. Um, so for Dalton's Law, if you have a mixture of gases in a container, uh, the total pressure exerted is going to be the sum of the pressures that each gas would exert if it were alone in that container. And so if we can find the what's called the partial pressure of each gas, then we can also find the total pressure when all the gases are put together in that container. And so the we just would add them together. So we have pressure total, and then for each gas, we would assign, you know, pressure partial pressure one, partial pressure two, and then add them together to get the total. So P sub one is the partial pressure of gas one if it was alone in that container. And so we'll do some calculations with this, but if you've got a mixture of gases, each one has its own partial pressure. Okay, so when we look at partial pressure, we're going to assume that each gas behaves as an ideal gas. And so we can use PV equals NRT in order to solve for partial pressure. So we're going to use the ideal gas law. So instead of saying PV equals NRT, we're rearranging it for pressure and then substituting in our sub 1 or subscript 2. Um, and you'll notice that the number of moles also has a 1 and a 2, and that's because pressure and number of moles are related to each other. So if we take P1 equals N1 RT over V and we rearrange, if we take all the number of moles, let's say we had three gases or however many, um, it would be the sum of all the moles, so N1 plus N2 plus N3 times the quantity RT over V. Because R is not going to change if they're all in the same container, the temperature is the same and the volume is the same. So we can put this into N total times the quantity RT over V. So the total number of moles is in, or moles of particles is important, not necessarily the composition as far as what type of gas it is, but the total number of moles is, is what's important and that's what we're looking for. Okay, so let's look at some other properties of ideal gases because we said that the partial of the partial pressure of each gas, we're going to assume it behaves as an ideal gas. So the volume of individual gas particles is not important. Okay, and because the volume is not important, that means that the forces among the, por the particles is not important. If these things were important, then the pressure exerted by the gas would depend on the nature of the individual particles. So the pressure would depend on what type of particle it was, not necessarily the quantity of the particle. So let's look at an example. We have 40, 46 liters. Oh, where did my pen go? There we go. Okay, so let's organize some of our information. Um, and I think, do we have another slide for this? Yep. Okay, so let's just read through and then we'll go to the next slide and, and do the problem. So we have 46 liters of helium at 25 Celsius and one atmosphere. And then we have 12 liters of oxygen at 25 Celsius and one atmosphere. So we've got two containers that are probably sitting on the counter. So same temperature, same atmospheric pressure. And then we're pumping them into a tank that has a volume of 5 liters. So now we're mixing the gases together into a new volume. So we want to calculate the partial pressure of each gas and the total pressure in the tank at 25. So because that volume is changing and we're mixing things together, the pressure when it's in its own container is going to change when it's put into a new container. Okay, But the partial pressure of that gas is what the pressure would be of that gas in the new container by itself. But it can't be the same as when it's in, like for example, the 46 liters of helium. Okay, so let's get some of our information organized. So for helium, we know we have a volume of 46 liters. Uh, the temperature of everything is 25 Celsius. Let's convert that to Kelvin right away. So 298K. We know initially that the pressure of the helium is one atmosphere. So now if we look at the oxygen by itself, not in the new container, we know we start with a volume of 12 liters. Again, everything's at 298K and one atmosphere. And then when we mix them together, so let's just call this the mix or the total, um, we know that we have a volume of 5 liters. We um, know that our temperature is also 298 Kelvin. We're looking for the total pressure in that container. We're also looking for the partial pressure once the gases are mixed. You know, I'm actually going to call this P of HE. You could say P sub 1 and P sub 2, but I like to use um, the elemental symbols because it just makes it easier and then you don't have to figure out well, which one did I assign piece of one and which one was piece of two. Okay, so there are some steps that we need to follow here. We know that in order to find total pressure, 
we need the partial pressure of each gas. And so, or we need the total number of moles. And we don't have either of those things right now. And we know that in order to find the partial pressure of each gas, we need the number of moles of each gas because then we can use the ideal gas law. So our first step is to find moles for helium and oxygen. Okay, once we've done that, then we can find our partial, partial pressures. So we can find partial pressure of helium and partial pressure of O2. And then once we have those, then we can find the total pressure in that new 5 liter container. So let's find number of moles first. Well, we know that the ideal gas law is PV equals nRT. So to range for N, I know that that's PV over RT. Now I'm gonna, because the number of moles isn't gonna change when the gas is by itself or when it's mixed in a container together, I'm gonna use the initial conditions to find the number of moles. So let's see, I know N equals our pressure, which when it's by itself is one atmosphere, times our volume, which is 46 liters, divided by R, which is 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So I know my units are all set. I have atmospheres in liters in Kelvin. And temperature is 298K. Okay, I've already calculated this for you. When you plug all that in, you should get 1.88 moles of helium. That's how much is going to go into the container together. So let's do the same thing for oxygen. We know our pressure is still one atmosphere. Here we had a volume of 12 liters of oxygen. Our, our, our R value is the same, and so is our temperature in this case. Okay, so when you plug all of that in, you should get 0 0.491 moles. Okay, so now we've got the moles of each. Well, now we want to find the partial pressures. We've got the pressure when the helium is sitting by itself, but now we want to know what the pressure of the helium is when it's mixed with oxygen in a 5 liter container. We know the number of moles isn't going to change, so now if we want to find partial pressure, let's take the ideal gas law, rearrange it for pressure, that's equal to N sub 1, whatever our number of moles for that particular gas is, RT over B. Now here's the change. Because we're looking for partial pressure, we know that that's when they're all mixed together in the 5 liter container, and so our volume is going to change to 5 liters because now they're mixed together it's in a new container. So our P sub HE, because we're looking for the partial pressure of helium, take our number of moles that we just saw for, remember that's not going to change, times R times T. Well, in the new container it's still 298K, so we can that's not going to change. Now, if it was a different temperature, this is the one that we would use. Okay, so all of that divided by our volume. Now, remember, we said because they're now mixed in a container together, we want to use the 5 liters. Okay, and if we calculate all of that, I've already done it for you, we should get 9.19 atmospheres. So that is the partial pressure of helium when it's mixed in the 5 liter container. Now let's do something similar for oxygen. We're going to use the number of moles we saw for for oxygen, which is 0.491 times our R value times the temperature in the new container, which is 298, and we're going to divide all of that by our new volume, which is 5 liters. Okay, and if you calculate all of that, you should get 2.40 atmospheres. Okay, so here we've got the number of moles. That was our first step. Here we have the partial pressures of each gas, so that's step two, and now we're trying to find the total pressure. Okay, well we know that there are a couple different ways to find total pressure. Pressure total is all the partial pressures added together, so we can take pressure, partial pressure of helium plus the partial pressure of O2, so that means 9.19 plus 2.40, and if we add those up that gives us 11.59 atmospheres, and then you could do significant figures from there. Now, remember that we could use the ideal gas law, and if we added up all the number of moles, we could make that in total, and then use the ideal gas law to solve for total pressure. So very similar to the rearrangement here, only we're using total number of moles. So you could do this as a check, or depending on the information you have, you could do it this way. So pressure total is also going to equal N total, which is going to be our 1.88 plus our 0 0.491, because those were our total moles, times R. The temperature in the new container was 298K, 
and then divide that by the volume of the new container, which was 5 liters. And if you plug all of that in, it should give us 11.60 atmospheres. So you can see that our answers are you know, basically the same with significant figures. And so you have two different options to solve for total pressure.